Well, welcome to the Devon and Cole Record Society's um, next podcast. And I'm very pleased to say we have, well, I hope you don't mind me calling you Mr. Plymouth. You've <laughs> Chris Robinson, who's who's um, really is synonymous with the history of Plymouth now, um, has done so much work on Plymouth. And this is a new book, which I'm going to allow you to give the title because it's a bit long. It's uh, Plymouth Before the War, From the Air, Then and Now. So it kind of does what it says on the tin, but there's a lot of words on the tin. <laughs> right. And tell me a bit about it. Well, uh, Plymouth, as a lot of people will know, was a fairly badly bombed city. And a, a lot of people struggle to place certain elements of the city centre in the modern context. And I kind of done it with a series of then and now books. And we've done half a dozen, I think, uh, from, from ground level. And I realized that I, I'd built up a collection over the years of about 60 or 70 pre-war aerial perspectives of Plymouth. And I, I, I'm guessing that's fairly unusual, but uh, I, I discovered after a very good friend of mine, Graham Brooks, let me have a whole load of picture postcards that he had of pre-war Plymouth from the air. And they had a, a little number on them and they also had SFS series. Now, in the past, I just looked at the image and I hadn't really taken any notice of this, but because I had a sudden influx of about 17, 18 of these images, I just thought, well, I wonder if I put the images in a date order, whether that unlocks anything in particular in terms of information. And curiously enough, I had another couple of uh, very good people helping me, Ann Corey and, and uh, Terry Williams, uh, Terry Wilson, and they they were looking for images, pre-war photographs, and we found a few online, British newspaper archive, Western Morning News, and they, they were obviously dated at the time they were put in, in the paper. And this, this was brilliant because I recognized a couple of them as being part of this SFS series. And I thought, well, that, that, that's quite interesting because that means that these pictures are earlier than I thought they were. I knew they were pre-war, and my intuitive assumption to start with is that they would be 1930s. And actually, a large proportion of them were 1924 or earlier, which I thought was pretty early for aerial photography. And it turns out that SFS series is the Surrey Flying Services, who are one of the first aviation companies in the country. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. They were based in Croydon. And then when I started to look into the history of Surrey Flying Services, I found that there was a poster for them being based in Croydon and Plymouth. And I thought, oh, well, that's, that's, I'd never heard of that before. And when Plymouth Airport at Robra came into being in 1931, Surrey Flying Services were one of the first leaseholders of the space there. And they were there for three years. And I think it was on the basis that they already had an affinity with Plymouth in the 1920s. And that's why when the airport was formalized and opened by Duke of Windsor at the time, I think it was, that they, um, they, they came down and got on board, but it didn't last for more than about three or four years. But clearly, uh, I think they took pictures all over the country and the main images that uh, we found were SFS series 2,508 to 2,561. But the, the, the local pictures were all dotted uh, around that series of numbers. So th there are a few that are later, but you will know what it's like, Todd. You look for clues and you find something that you've ignored for years and just thought, well, there's no date. It can't, it can't be that helpful. And nobody had produced a catalog of their postcards but suddenly, having identified them, and the interesting thing about when they appeared in the paper was clearly Surrey Flying Services were trying to promote themselves. So they'd let the newspaper use one of these images and they'd, they'd, uh... sorry, Claire, can you stop? <laughs> sorry, my, my other half is making noise in the background and it's, it's, it's slightly disconcerting me. Yeah. That, they, they made all these images and they let them go to the newspaper and uh, they put an airman's view. And by just 
Googling in, in the newspaper article, and Airman's View, I found other Surrey Flying Services pictures that they'd allowed the newspapers to use, but with that little, just key phrase, an Airman's View. And I, I just couldn't believe how something as innocuous and simple as that could, could unlock information that I, I was struggling for. Because I, I'd looked at loads of these pictures to see buildings that I knew that were maybe added in 1930 or 1935 and I couldn't see them and I thought well it must be late 20s but the notion that they might be 1924 or, or slightly earlier than that was was fascinating so I'd been collecting images uh, I've, I've written a book on Plymouth in the 20s and 30s the Edwardian period uh, and I'd done other then and now books but not like I say from an aerial perspective and the other key thing that you know, I'm talking about uh, the British newspaper archive being online. The other key thing that wasn't available to us when we started out doing research was mm. the uh, phenomenon that is Google Earth. And that uh, just enabled me, uh, I, I learned my piloting skills quite quickly to, to, to zoom over a bit of Plymouth that I wanted, orientate north, south, east, west, and then you can adjust the height so you could just about fly to exactly the same position as the mm -hmm. airman's perspective in 1924, 1934, whenever it was that they took the pictures. But that really gave you key buildings, particularly in the center of Plymouth, St. Andrew's Church, the Guildhall, that were both restored, even though they'd been reduced to a shell during the Second World War. It gave you key points that you could orientate around, make them the same size in both photographs, and then suddenly, Whereas before with uh, similar views, you're playing spot the difference. Here, I was playing spot the similarity. Where, where, where are the little nuggets that you can, you can look into and therefore say, ah, I'm in exactly the right place. And it was such good fun. Uh, and I would recommend anybody to do it if they have some early aerial perspectives because it, it, you learn a lot through that exercise and just looking and thinking oh I did that's where that building was I know it was near the guild hall but I didn't realize that's what it looked like and from the air all these things look totally different and and you get uh, in your instance extra you, you you would get just a whole fresh perspective on something when you see it from a different angle and once you've got your date and you've got your place and place is much easier but the dating as you say you know is a surprise um what things were thrown up by writing it up did you suddenly surprise yourself and think oh i haven't thought about that before well yeah th th there was a grain silo uh at mill bay that was actually modeled on a french cathedral even though everybody said what an ugly building it was and i i didn't believe them until they sent me a picture postcard of the french cathedral and i thought well that's not a very attractive cathedral uh, so uh, it, it was absolutely true it was it was very much in the style of that building and uh yeah i hadn't realized uh, well that I, I thought it was pre-war, but it was actually uh, opened and, and erected during the war. I think it opened in 1942. So there are a handful of images in the book that are in the 1940s, but they don't show the devastation. That they're, they're there as illustrations of parts of Plymouth that I hadn't got pictures for. Like the Royal Albert Railway Bridge, uh, the Americans had a base there at the top, which is why they renamed Vicarage Hill Normandy Way in the uh, well in the post-war period but the the uh, the Americans had a big base camp at the at the top where you have the car park for the Tamar Road Bridge now and I I'd known that they had a camp there but I, I hadn't exactly worked out where and and the aerial photograph just shows it exactly which is perfect and I, I've learned how much you can learn from aerial perspectives really Gosh. well it is i mean it, you know it's a whole different other way of approaching a town really i and i can't think of anybody who's done it anywhere in devon it's, you know people use a picture yeah but not well, exploited it properly uh, and i can't uh, i can't think that that there's going to be anybody quite like me in another town or city that maybe has amassed a collection yeah. of 
that number of pre-war images and have uh, a degree of knowledge. So I'm not just writing, this picture was taken in 1936, this picture was taken in 2020, uh, and look how it's changed. Yeah. You know, I'm able to add quite a bit of detail. Uh, I, I must say that my first then and now books were pretty much, you know, spot the changes and see how the trees have grown. And that was a bit, bit hopeless, really, in terms of uh, presenting information. But now they're much more uh, detailed and informative. Yeah. Well, I think we all grow as we write a book. That's the thing. We, we learn more than the, than the reader does. Really. Well, and that's the joy for us. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, how can one purchase your, your book? What's the best way to get it? Uh, I'm about to put it online today because it came out yesterday. We went over to Mount Batten to, to launch the book because Mount Batten had a flying base uh, from 1917. It was RNAS Catwater. And then after the war, uh, Lawrence of Arabia was stationed there, mm -hmm. Aircraftsman Short, and it ceased to be uh, an air station in the 80s, I think it was, but in the 1960s, when I was at primary school, my mate's dad was the uh, wing commander over there. So I knew it quite well from my, my early days, uh, but it just seemed like the perfect place for uh, an aerial book to be, to be launched. And uh, quite a few of the pictures are taken from, um, from flying boats. Uh, and there's a lovely photograph in the book of uh, two flying boats, and I captioned it, uh, three Southampton supermarine flying boats in 1937 I think it was and my mother-in-law who's one of the proofreaders said where's the third plane I can only see two and I said it's the one that's taking the photograph <laughs> all right well best luck with the book it deserves to be um well purchased for Christmas because it's an obvious Christmas present um we'll put the details up on our line on our website yeah, it, it's also available from the box and Smiths and Waterstones in Plymouth. And we've got a Christmas market actually opening on Thursday in wow. Armada Way in Plymouth. So, yeah, we're all geared up. All right. Well, thank you again, Chris, for taking your time. And best of luck with the new book. Thanks, Doc. Good to speak.